Okay, welcome to the novice finals. Prime Minister, you can begin when ready. Okay, uh, am I audible? All right, I just assume I'm audible. Okay, I'll start my speech in three. Two, one. I right know we're now living in a hyper capitalistic society, one where we are chained to the whims and wants of the establishment and bourgeoisie, where profit will always take precedence over the fulfillment of an individual's life and hard work labor. Automation has taken away millions of jobs, causing massive unemployment and indirectly ensures suffering for all. This will be worse over time as AI becomes more advanced and humans get replaced over time. In today's debate, it is not about whether or not automation is good or bad, but then it is one where we contextualize the role of automation in human labor. So panel, if we then convince you that it is indeed compact, in, in, that if we then convince you that automation is indeed incompatible with human labor, then we have truly won this debate. But before moving on a few key pieces of characterization, let's have the, a look at status quo. We believe that the current day and age looks like a world where automation is still ongoing, one where there will still be some sort of jobs that are still left, where humans are still involved in some sort of menial and math-heavy work, one that could still be replaced by AI. It may look like us still having doctors, still having secretary, one that is still not replaced by chat GBT, and so on and so forth. Then, if that's the case, how does automation look like in both sides of the aisle? We believe that automation looks like the usage of robot or technology to replace the role of humans in work. This may look like the usage of robotic machines in manufacturing or the usage of chat GPT in office work to simplify time. To make it simple, the only reason why employers or the, gen uh, the general population would like to opt into automation is because of multiple reasons. First, is because automation are able to increase the amount of profit solely because automation simplifies the amount of time that is taken to do a simple job. It may look like chat GPT being able to do math work that might take like 30 or 40 minutes in just one single minute. Or it might be because uh, it, because automation, you are able to do uh, the same amount of job with the less amount of people. Like back then, you might need to have like five or 10 people do one job, but instead you're going to need one person with AI or automation in general. But then it moves on to how like we, to, to explore the characteristic of automation in general. The problem with automation here is that the main difference between you giving jobs to robots and humans is because robots don't generally need days off. You don't really get paid as a robot. And all the time, they only need electricity and just machine. So in this case, as compared to a human, humans generally need a minimum wage. They generally need food. They generally need some sort of rest. This may look like how Amazon will literally automate the, the operation of their warehouses because instead of giving their, their, their workers 15 minutes to go to the toilet and take a break, they can just tell their robots to work 24-7. So in this case, on either side of the house, there will still be a lot of automation going on and there will still be a lot of jobs taken. Then it moves on to my first argument today about how automation as a byproduct of human greed and a hyper-capitalist society, hence why it is incompatible with human labor. But then why is the framing for today's debate? Because in today's in my, my argument for today, the problem here is that when you actually prioritize human greed over the fulfillment of over the fulfillment of the hard work labor of these people, then there will be multiple effects that I'll be listed on in my argument for today. Then first layer of analysis: How is this then true? It, this goes back to the two main reasons. First, because of the profit-oriented hierarchical structure that is present in today's society. This may look like corporations having to appease their shareholders by trying to cut down costs to maximize profit. Because right in the current day and age, when you have those uh, shareholders, when you have those board of directors, they will be constantly pressured to instantly cut down the amount of workers to ensure that they're able to give out the most amount of dividends. So instead of having like, oh, $5 million as dividend, you can cut down 5,000 workers and give $10 million of dividends. So hence why those corporations have an incentive to cut down jobs. Second of all, is that it's the general push for material wealth by society. Now, the opposition might say that, oh, this only applies 
to you know big corporations about how SMEs will not really go for automation. But we believe there is something wrong because even at the current status quo, there is still a lot of SMEs and small companies that are going for automation. This may look like how mom and pop shops are using chat GPTs for secretarial work as compared to hiring an actual secretary. This is solely because in general society, they will tell society will tell you if you're not rich, then you're not happy, that you're not the best person in life. Hence why even in the smallest scale factor, which is a mom and pop shop, there will still be huge level of automation that is primarily driven by human greed. And then it brings back to my second layer of analysis, that why is it so important that we do not have automation and why is it incompatible in the first place? Because the problem here is that when you have automation that is solely done for profit, it takes away the true meaning of work and life and self-fulfillment for all of those workers because of two main reasons. First, is that most of the time, people rely on the work to have a sense of self-fulfillment. This may look like how a certain office worker who is working as a secretary, being happy at his own job, just doing menial work. So when you have automation, when you have a chat GPT instead of the secretary, then you're taking away his ability to have some sort of self-fulfillment. And this is why this is indirectly compatible. Hence why it is directly incompatible with human labor in its own. But you know what? Before six, is there any opposition? Yeah, sure. We believe the automation will be able to replace a lot of jobs that are menial and are repetitive. But at the same time, there are still a lot of workers that believe in self-fulfillment, that believe that, hey, even though this job is very repetitive, even though this job is a nine to five, I still like it because there's some sort of excitement or some thrill. Because, right, even if that job is repetitive, a lot of workers nowadays, they will try to look forward to something new in their goals. It might be like completing a project that their boss gave to them, or it might look like going after the promotion. So this is something that is non-existent on the opposition side. Because as soon as you take away the jobs, you will literally remove a lot of meaning in their life. Something that, because you're removing the things that those workers will look up to, uh, where that those workers will try to achieve while they're trying to work. And then second of all is how, because of this, this would, because of automation, this will indirectly take away jobs. Now, I might be seen as repetitive here, panel, but one thing to note here is that the only reason why it's important that those automation is incom incompatible with human labor is because eventually this will disenfranchise everyone. And the thing that the opposition has to defend here is why exactly having automation, taking away millions of jobs are something that's compatible with human life and human labor. And this is something that I don't really understand coming from the opposition. Then let's do a couple of mitigation first. Now, the opposition might say and come up, hey, robots are not 100% dependable and they can replace all jobs. And our answer here is this. Sure, they can't replace doctors. They can't replace a lot of other jobs that can only be done by humans. But we would like to argue that the amount of jobs that they're taking is still very much and it's still applicable to both sides of the aisle. And that's why I'm about to propose. Thank you. Um, I'll start my speech in three, two, one. Automation isn't the devil. It actually, it is there for you to have a better life. And that better life will only exist within our world, not your world. Because of all, um, 
I will continue with some characterization and a, some bits of their characterization. First of all, how does the future of labor looks like? A future, the future of labor is the future of the workers, which all um, encompasses the three things. First of all, condition of employment, demand, and employment. Then, from, yeah, you see, the problem here is that, wait for that, and, and also some characterization on what, how exactly does automation looks like. Automation isn't chat GPT. You see why? Because chat GPT requires someone with a brain, someone with, uh, knowing what specifics of what we need to actually put within the information for them to actually come up with the exact result. That is not automatic. Automatic is being able to think by themselves to do a specific coding of what they want to do without any mistakes. Well, you see, chat GPT isn't exactly the best example that can come out from their side. So, and they talk about how uh, a secretarial um, is, is out of job because they are not no longer able to do the menial works. And do you think the CEO will be the one reading the information? No, it's the secretary themselves. The secretary is not the ones impacted by the automation of uh, the industries. And, and they talk about how the meaning of life, uh, they, like they, we will take away the meaning of life for these workers uh, because they are doing like meager and low paying jobs. Their role was to make sure that people stay within the, the small pay industry. Our role was to take away these people from this small pay industry, have give them a better life, give them a better paying job, give them a better way of living, all of which uh, encompasses the three future of labor that we have, I have talked about just now. So I'll continue with um my arguments. Okay, first of all, what exactly is the sense within uh the the opposition, we wish to deplete manual labor and increase the industry of professional industry. Why is that uh, important? Okay. And because we are we are because automation is important. Sorry, okay. Why? Because you want to create something called a sum, a zero sum result. So how exactly does that look like? So you see, manual lab, um let's talk about the score a bit. You see, automation will actually impact manual labor more than we wish, uh, than they wish to focus on. Why? Because we talk about the current situation of manual labor. Manual labor gives you low meaning. We rely too much on manual labor on everyday uh, life. We have low professional rates with pro low professional amount of professionals within the manual labor, and the manual labor industry itself is much more complex and much more dangerous. Why? Because when we put people within manual labor, such as within the coal mine. Uh, constructions or within uh, the people building building buildings, right? All of that is much more dangerous without automation. Um, and automation, and so right now in our world, we want to take away automation from manual labor while increase um, the labor within the professional professional industry, hence um, increase automation and the future of uh, labor together. Before that, go ahead. Look, sure, the jobs right now pay meager wage, but that because when you are going to lose millions of jobs. Sure, at the end of the day, you cannot skip these workers, but there will never be enough jobs to go around. Please be generous. Uh, please. Give, uh, give us a so you see, why do Why exactly do we say that we are able to pull them out of this modern labor, put them in a safe, more safe and more professional, um, in a way, professional or suitable environment of work for that? First of all, the governments are able to get more income with the high efficiency efficiency of automation within this manual labor industry, which is still a booming industry within our our country, but it's a low paying one, low paying one. And why? Because we are able to increase more money to track tax income of companies that are high in efficiency due to the fact that they are able to use um automations within the way of uh, the way of how they do their work uh in this manual labor industry. And from that we are able to well, put more money within taxes from the taxes with into social security and social protection of those those who lost their jobs due to the automations. Now, because of that, we are able to actually create a world where the government are able to put more money into um into education systems, into protection of the people uh that are losing their jobs because of the automation. And actually, when you say we don't actually uh ignore the fact that yes, indeed, we are going to cost. Be, the people to lose their jobs because of automations. But we are telling you, by putting them into a better paying job, with the safety job, we are able to actually create a much better life. And you just imagine, by like we believe that by putting uh getting putting automations within the middle labor, we are increasing tax tax and are able to 
uh, build an education system to shift them into professional industry. Like to be uh to be exact, a many labor will be able to be taught in being a chef. A many labor will be able to talk about mechanic that are, have the ability to, to actually control this uh, automation of the mechanics. So this will increase the professional industry demand, because therefore increasing the employment and employment condition will be off the charts. Why? Because the fact that professional industry themselves is a high paying industry if we were to compare the manual labor industry. And it because of that, you see, even right now, our world actually uh, judges how a country, how well a country is doing by how many professionals do they have, not how, by how many manual labors they have. Therefore, you see how much uh, the impact of actually automation can give to the country, to the people that are within the manual labor, so that they can be shifted into professional labor. Therefore, we cannot see there's in no way that we actually are going to um. So in a way, the the uh, the increase of automations within the industry will also be proportional with the increase of labor, the increase of employment rate, the increase of uh, conditions of employment all within together. So in the end, we have provided you that actually, you know, automations will only not only provide more safety to the people, but actually allow the government to get more money to tax, to having us the higher patients of the company, but also are able to protect the people that are from this manual labor industry, uh, through social, social security of giving, you know, giving them help so that they are able to finally stand on their own, stand on their own feet. And with the, uh, with this much more professional, professionally inclined industrial, uh, professionally, more professionally inclined education, so in the end increasing, what are the view of the people on our country itself? That is something we need. That today's side government wants to prove to you why the opposite the argument is an effective, it's untrue, and it's not important. Before that, let me just uh go uh before that a few things. Uh the all might say to you that the robots aren't one hundred percent dependable, but we're here to mitigate that. Just because they are not dependable now, it doesn't mean that it's the same in the future. Because just like how humans can adapt over time. Robots who don't sleep, don't eat, and who only need electricity, which they have enough, cannot get better within a short time frame. And why this is true is because human evolution took millions of years. It took millions of years. The only reason why we're able to go this far is because we develop technology, aka machines, and to make our lives better and to make our days longer. Nowadays, not only machines, uh, not only machines make days longer by taking away minimal stuff like traveling, time, and cooking. They're also taking away the minimal tasks in jobs. For example, ChatGPT can make uh, what takes you 30 minutes and five seconds, and that's 30 minutes taken away from the person's time time working. Um, okay, what to say that in the future that uh, uh, a ChatGPT cannot do eight hours of work in 30 minutes, that means that an average worker being paid to work eight hours of work loses that work to ChatGPT. That means there's one less worker in that company, and that in fact, that is multiplied by millions because every company will want to save that money that is used to pay the workers. And the impact is that millions of jobs to be lost to robots, especially industry like finance and banking that require efficiency and accuracy that is much, uh, that is much clean and much, uh, much uh, true with automation. Now, a uh, few rebuttals before I go on to my arguments. Um, uh, the opposition came and told, told you that automation isn't ChatGPT because ChatGPT requires a person thinking to uh, give you an answer. But 
let me just tell you that uh, we, the site got things that the site out doesn't know what ChatGPT is. So to clarify a bit that uh, what they said is not true because ChatGPT is it requires actually an algorithm that takes the data off of the internet to form an answer to the user. So um, then uh, the opposite, the, the op uh, told you that uh, about the increase that uh, about the capac capability and capacity of upskills. So let's talk about the capacity to upskill. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, not many people can upskill anyways because no, there's they have no money and they don't have the capacity. This may look like the, a 15-year-old man who is working a manual job and he may no longer have the capacity to upskill. And even though the, a lot of even though, even if a lot of people can upskill, there's not enough jobs to replace it. And in their world, they would never have the same amount of job after automation. Now, um, moving on into my argument is that uh, the increase of automation leads to social unrest that is caused by less jobs due to un automation. Now, what's the framing for this? It is because when we have less jobs, it means that we have less people that have no ways to feed their families. And why is this true? It's because when automation goes viral, it means that business owners are likely to choose to automate than to hire actual people. Because as PM, my PM have said that robots don't need days off. All they need is electricity and maintenance. So, which means that um, arguably just because it's more expensive in short term, doesn't mean that it benefits in the long term. Because fellow, we understand that investing in automation is expensive. But when a business has to shut down because there's no workers to work, because they call out sick, this just leads to more expenses for the business to run. Okay, for example, I give you in restaurant, uh, in restaurant industries, they have this problem to find staff, and when and when they do have staff, it's such a high because it's such a high traffic industry. The staff will call sick a lot, and this means that managers and owners have to uh, struggle to find a replacement of these uh, workers. If if they thought if they cannot find replacement, then they would have to shut down sections of restaurants. And to solve this problem, restaurants would have to choose to invest in robots to save to serve food. We can see this in situations like sushi restaurant or when you go to Black Camera. And why does this cause unrest? Okay, because uh, the industries, uh, for example, like re restaurant industry, they employ a lot of low skilled labor like uh, uneducated labor who don't have the means to upskill. So this leads to unrest in the lower class because people are losing their job. So uh, before the sick, and if you I yeah, no. Okay, so what does uh, the impacts, what does this give impacts to the society? It, uh, the impacts are it causes unrest to the country because people have no livelihood. It is important this, uh, this argument is important to the debate because it shows you that when automation takes over the industry, it causes unrest in the people itself. So we, uh, so we are proving that future employability, especially of the lower classes, and the rise of automation cannot exist in the future. Because uh, these companies that are hiring uh, actual humans have no incentive to actually hire human workers that it, uh, then even though uh, the government uh, passed a law to make uh, to make a law that even though the government passed a law that makes it mandatory for them to hire a, uh, an amount of uh, humans because it doesn't mean that they have to pay them fairly because if a robot can do it faster than you then why should I, why should the comp why should the company uh, hire you or pay you more than uh, pay you more so uh, that's it yeah.
Do you guys realize that nowadays there are a lot of foreign workers around us, especially those working in manual jobs, those in labor works that people simply don't want to do? They are like, there are, there are people from Indonesia working in oil palm plantation. There are people from Bangladesh filling out the vacancy in factories. There are people from Nepal be, being the security guard in a lot of factories or a lot of residential areas. What is that so? The main push from government team is basically that there's a decrease of job opening, there'll be unemployment. But what we are telling you today is that it doesn't matter. Because nowadays, we are already facing a mismatch of job opportunities. When there are, when there are, when there are huge opening of uh, manual workers that young people are simply not interested in, we are not debating in, in, in the era of the 1800s and most people just rely on labor jobs. And this is the reason why there's an like influx of diverse range of foreign workers in, into different countries. It's not just limited to developed countries, but, but also developing countries like Malaysia. And therefore, with, with all these reasons, I, th I, I think that, yes, to a certain extent, even if we concede that there is a decrease in job openings, I don't think that the harm will be as large, simply because people are nowadays are not really interested in it. But after all, we don't think that it is really, we, we don't think that it really, yeah, it really decreased the number of job openings. As you say, it's, it just changed the type of job from those that are legal to those that are professionals. Okay. So into, into my main into my main argue, into my main argument, right? So why why is this auto, why is this automation so important in yeah in important improving the life and the work condition of workers? I see that the government team mainly focused their, their arguments in terms of uh, the number of employment. But what we are telling you today is that the future of worker is not just about employment itself, but it also includes a lot of other things. For example, like social security, where once a person gets unemployed, what happened to them? And also the condition of the employment, whether the most dangerous part of the job will be replaced by robots or must be done manually by the worker themselves. I think that the case of the opposition, the case of the opposition team, better provide with the better provide all of this welfare to the workers simply because obviously there's an increase in safety and and, and of course there's a better social security with the mechanism that's been stated by by the leader of opposition, leader of opposition. With, with automation, obviously, the company pursue it because they think that it will bring them more profit. And what does more profit mean? It simply means more tax money for, with the government. And what, and what does more tax money mean? It basically means that there will be more funding for social, for, for social security. So even if the, even if the government can tell us that, okay, or automation might, serve, might somehow lead to higher unemployment, but if the government is realizing or the public is realizing that there is that companies are earning a lot of money, but at the same time, unemployment rate increase. Then what will naturally happen next is that there, is a, there will be a public pressure towards the better distribution of the money, towards things like social security, towards things like funding for those that are unemployed, towards things like training to upskill the worker, towards things like retirement scheme, or maybe the work uh, insurance towards the work injury. All of these things are the likely outcome of uh, likely outcome of a of automation and a better, uh, higher value added, added industry in the country itself. So, what, what about the whole, 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 whole argument of unrest from the from uh, the government team? I think that that only occurs if that country is is that kind of country that highly rely on manual labor and don't have a good social security security system. Only in that kind of country, where an economic crisis occurs, a lot of people will lose their job and naturally fall into crimes and fall into, yeah, fall into unemployment or, un or unrest. If a country is highly reliant on population and already has, uh, has a high value added industry with a, like, with a wealth among, with, with a sufficient amount of wealth among in the government itself, I don't think that unrest will happen easily. I think I, I think that it is more likely to occur in the in, uh, in the side of government. But why, in the end of the day, it is still generally beneficial to uh to, to the workers themselves. I would argue this in 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 the perspective of country. So if a if a government understand or the country understand that yes, my country is transitioning from the manual manual worker industry into the automated industry. So what like what the likely to but what is likely to occur? I think that first, the government will be more incentivized to invest in education, to invest in training, for uh, to invest things like higher education, to train more engineers instead of in, in, instead of things like uh instead of just training your people to be a manual manual worker like home, my 
so minor or construction worker. This means that there will be generally greater opportunity for workers to upskill themselves and also greater opportunity for students and also young people in that country to receive a better education, a better education and a better opportunity of training. But second of, but, but second of all, we need to understand that if a country just will keep on relying on cheap labor, it is unlikely to make any improvement to the workers' welfare themselves, or obviously the welfare of better labor themselves. Due to a few reasons, right? First of all, because people because people in the world without automation sees hard manual labor as norm, which means that they won't they won't try to improve the welfare of these people simply because they have already been used to it, and therefore they will be less likely to have any public pressure to for government to improve their welfare. But second of all, it but second of all, without an automated industry, it means that manual labor is the backbone of the economy of the of the country. So it. it if, if, if cheap labor or metal labor plays a significant role in the, in the country's economy, it will be less likely for the gov government to actually push, push on any labor reform or improvement of the welfare of the worker simply because it will add cost to the, the, the entire industry. Whereas in the automated industry, simply because each, each factory employ less workers, it means that government, the government or companies is more likely to push for higher salaries or better welfare of workers because it won't impact their industry that much. But, but third of all, but third of all, uh, sorry, I just proceed to the company perspective where, where that company itself employs a lot of manual labors versus a, a few automated labors, right? If if they, in a in a company in a company is automated, they will be more likely to, to accept uh demands for, from the workers to for example increase their salary or to increase their welfare simply because this will this will pro, this will create less added cost to the company the company itself. But, se but second but second of all, when when workers have the choice to work in a more automated company that operates the same machine and get a higher pay, it means that dirty and dangerous jobs that are currently available are forced to pay higher in order to attract workers to, 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 to work for them. And at the same time, also improves, increase the safety precaution and, 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 and ensure that that job, to a certain extent, provides certain, certain level of security or fulfillment to the job to the worker themselves. And therefore, with this all, with these changes in the ecology of the like the, the workers' company relationship itself, I think that in general it will benefit the futures of the labor. With this, I proudly propose. Thank you. Preferably, if you are up there for more minutes, I won't ever take anything before that. Um, so, yeah. Start my speech in three, two, one. Panel, robots don't take days off. If I was a business owner who is in business to make money, why would I then hire a human who gets sick, who goes on vacation, who is slower and inefficient? The only burden on government is to prove that automation equals less jobs in the future. The burden on opposition then is to prove the, op the opposite thing, that automation equals more jobs in the future. I'll show you that through our biggest clash, up tells you, uh, that through our biggest clash here, up tells you automation helps people upskill. I'll prove now that based on that particular claim itself, their benefits can materialize and their and their impacts don't work based on the things they've given us. Number one, um, just to go into a few minor rebuttals, is that I don't think uh opposition actually understands what chat GPT is or what automation actually is, because they probably never used it, which is good and bad. Automation is when something reduces the amount of human interaction needed to actually complete it. ChatGPT is then indeed a form of automation, and it means that if I can use ChatGPT to do a secretary's job, it means that secretary is out of a job because I don't need her anymore. So moving on then into one of the biggest claims coming in from uh, opposition is that when you deplete the amount of manual labor, it increases the amount of sophisticated industry labor that you can have. So they say that because government income increases because you get that increased efficiency, you use tax money for social security. I argue that automation affects a developing country the most 
when in, when in comparison to a developed country, which means that the manual labor that's being done in these developing countries goes away because these uh, because these developed countries can then now move that labor towards their own countries, which will benefit them tax wise. So that means that they can't have and like that means that the funds that they're using to fund their mechanism of actually trying to upskill their labor doesn't exist because the, the industry that they rely on for that tax money no longer exists in that country in the first place, which means that their benefits don't materialize at all. You need to pay, uh, like, if Zara employs people in China to do, like, sewing work and robots can do it cheaper, but China increases their taxes, what is the, what is, like, if I'm the owner of Zara, why would I keep the company, like, work in China in the first place if Europe is offering me uh, to pay less taxes on that in, to begin with. So then the claim then does not materialize, no benefits materialize. So moving on, uh, moving on into their next claim uh, on how a lot of foreign, there are a lot of foreign workers working like manual jobs. So what? Some Malaysians still work those jobs. But in when those jobs decrease, uh, like it also, when you know, in a vacuum, when jobs decrease, it also affects those professional industries because automation doesn't just like uh, affect these menial jobs. It also affects things like accountancy, finance, and even some medical jobs because you can have robots to do the accountancy. You can have robots to do all the banking work. You can have like minor robots to do a doctor's work, which means that even if you claim like even if your benefit of upskilling does happen, it means that the more you up uh, like the more you upskill, the more automation takes away those jobs. So then there are no jobs whatsoever. So in the future, like in the future, where like right now there are seven billion people in the world, if that is in, like going to increase by like one billion by net like next decade. In the next decade, which means we need more jobs. So in opposition's world, where they fight for this increase of skill that doesn't actually happen, it means that they aren't looking at the bigger picture that automation just takes away those professional jobs in the first place. So moving on to the next thing coming in from off. And before that, any of you guys? Three, two, one. Okay. Next thing coming in from off is that they say future employment also like includes like increases social security because companies make money blah 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 i've already told you why that this social security isn't a isn't that there's no ability for the social security to happen because there is no longer an industry for you to tax in these developing countries in the first place which means developed countries stay poor which means the people in the developing countries stay poor forever and it means developed countries get to increase the amount of automation they have. It means that they get to have a higher level of living. It means that they get to, uh, it means that they get to, uh, like benefit the most. Then, uh, so moving the, uh, moving on. I'll weigh, uh, I'll weigh the cases coming in from both sides. In government, we've told you that. Automation equals less jobs in the future. In, uh, and we mechanize that by saying that when you don't need more human labor, it means that there's no incentive for any business whatsoever to keep employing humans because automation equals that they can make the same amount of like revenue, but decrease your costs. So in opposition's world, they fight for a world where automation still exists, but somehow those benefits of uh, those benefits of those benefits of automation still exist in your world. But we showed you that those benefits in all don't actually materialize on that side with government.
definitely need the experience students. You know that I have like the social area. So if I call, don't be out, don't run. It's not okay. It's not like it's not an infection. It's basically just because I don't want them. Okay. Okay, I'll start my speech in three, two, one. If I'm found working in the coal mine, I have to work all hard labor because I don't have to. I'm unclear of what kind of material that government is talking about. That's not my employment. I think that's the biggest push coming from our government. So, there are many push to say that AS would run away a lot of people by getting away the work of people. But we would say otherwise. First, we have that it's convenient, it makes life easier for a lot of these hard labor persons. But second, we tell you that we can actually grant to know the game. Because now we have higher achievement, we have higher efficiency, we lower the workload, we get more flexibility, and which means that you get the place of backbone. So which means that you're able to work your work backbone. And that's great. But good, I know that that actually do more things. I would buy my science student. I would die if I could have a machine that would be able to auto it in my bacteria, and which I don't have to stay by my bacteria for all day. But that's good. A chat GPT, even if you say that it's part of automation, you would die for a year. You don't truly buy the show. I don't have to read through hundreds of articles to get the answer to that. All I need to do is just read through actual chat GPT. So, if anything, I think all automation automations are going to feel our work easier. There's a lot of fear in there. I would call it that all actually get it done. Because even if you buy the job, in so far as you're unable to do it well, you're unable to see the true impact, you're unable to see the achievement, you're unable to maximize it to the fullest, all you get is just be you being overworked, and all you get is just you, you getting burned out. So which means that all the conclusion that all that government wants to give is unable to pay in so far as you can't get whatever achievement, which automation will help you and be very good. So in so far, so what I think so far, you go to do that. AI is not, for example, it's so much how to do your work better, and that plays a lot of value in your position of the government, in terms of fulfillment, in terms of how you make your work easier. But the third response to it then is that it's untrue, right, that the AI will take away all of your work. Because we do like a good trade equation, and so far as we tell you that jobs that we need to automation will be targeted to the job game in automation. So that means that jobs like engineering, jobs like digital engineering and everything, um, are going to be a big industry that we have right now. And this is only materialized in our work in so far as we have to be, in so far as we start with the imagination. So which means that if you feel the opposition try the government try to prove to you the fact that when you take more AI, you use more jobs, because in fact you will create more jobs in there. And we say that it's a new something. We say that we what we lose, we got the game. And the only changes we get is that we get people to be better than get higher education quality, and at last improve their quality of life. But what we would also posit that unemployment happens to both sides anyway. Look at America, one of the biggest countries that we have. The only what we actually do right now is just barely making an employment now percent to our media on that side. And it's very hard for them to take the jail for that. And that's basically like right, reaching it every the model that everything is saying right now. We think that unemployment is very hard to change. So here's what we break and we tell you that. Okay, here's what we break and we tell you that the breaking point is to reach side. Has to provide better social security to the people. We both are kind of burden on the both sides, no matter uh, which side we're trying to burden. So, I think that breaks down to two things. One, which side is better to have like, a, better, a better social security for the people who are employed? And I think this comes only by two ways. One, which is people having better income as possible. So, if you want to have more income, more savings, this is why you're able to buffer for a lot of them. A second, we should have better money to better social security. We look at the only data and other than that. So let's talk about let's talk about like how we better get social security there, right? We tell you that when the country gets more taxes, when the country gets more taxes and people who have higher income, this is where um uh, this is this is where the country can achieve higher income. Because I think we have 
when you get established in that time, when you get more information, automation is a higher added value in your that efficiency at getting people to work, etc. So that means that our country have more income, more experience, and with money, you can do a lot of things, right? So what well, the thing that you actually by highest the social security system, which is that it's a system where even buffer those who are unemployed, makes both people who are employed, which exists in both sides, by the way, that's the online sector. But second, in terms of GDP as well, we increase the GDP. So which means that not only, even though that we can work with, we can still have a solution to it, right? If it, it is only when the country is able to increase the infrastructure, increase the GDP, we're able to attract more people, more investment coming to their country, and so unemployment. If the only thing that government wants to support is the fact that we want to continue on manual labor, when the country is still going on to have like not enough. Um, money, I'm unclear as to how they're going to solve unemployment. So, what have I put to you so far here? Well, we have a fact, we have a fact, unemployment is really unemployment, is untrue. Um, unemployment is untrue. We have a fact, it is an equal thing, right? It's just a simple transition of people working manual labor towards working in population. But two, this debate is not about people getting jobs. This is not something of a minority, which is a care that we want to create. Because look at the people working in hard manual. Even if they have more jobs, these are people who have to work night and night, and even like overnight, on their side to work. They have to treat all more dangerous, less flexibility. I'm going to create this example if, if this is really the, what the worker wants at the end of the day. But thirdly, that we also need to that this is about job mismatch. In a lot of countries, like even in Malaysia, even though that we have a lot of jobs, uh, you have a ministry that oh, we have a lot of jobs. But the problem is that this is not a job that a lot of us want to do. What we want to do is basically like being an accountant, but these are the openings that are not enough. So even if they're able to say that they have more job openings, I'm not clear as to if this is what the new model of the tree would want. But even if we back the bullet and to say that unemployment is more on our side, we're still able to put to you one because of social security, which is an unemployed and a better life. And then again, we have that as a solution to it, right? We provide as a way to get more people, and I don't think that this is proven on that opposition. So let's deal with the idea that comes with this people. In terms of develop and underdeveloped country, right? How companies will shift to underdeveloped to develop countries. First, I don't think that okay. So firstly that I don't I don't think that the, the, the shift will eventually happen for underdeveloped country because there's still gonna be a difference in labor. But in so far as the country will put some effort into changing their people to be much more um professional, that is where you will able to for professional, where government is more insightful to produce more choice of people, to educate people, uh, to get them into into these jobs, really that this is something that you're able to retain much more people, uh company. Coming to your company at the end of the day. But as I said, it is a trend that we move us to find it as interested in a lot of manual labors, anyways. So, I'm going to be very clear into why we're doing this to get you. First, we go to you the biggest chunk of patient position while unemployment is true, but even so, it means that even if you buy the goods that are really more than a job, you're still better off. But as I said, we also put the betterment for general workers, like everyone, they have get better welfare, which is only able to materialize, but they can only get more income, they have more tax on how much they Our grandparents once lived in that golden age of manual labor. They are living in an era that getting a job is something honorable, that they are happy to be exploited by companies, by bosses. They are happy to receive a low pay just to get a job and to feed the family. But this, the time has changed. The future of worker now is not just about getting a job. It's, 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 it's about a lot of other things. It's about getting a uh, opportunity for career advancement. 
It's about opportunity of education. It's about self fulfillment. It's about what is a working condition. Is it safe enough? Do they give you insurance? Do they give you other benefits? Do they give you allowance, uh, uh, allowance, leave, and so on? I think that a lot of these factors are the things that workers nowadays actually consider considers more in comparison to just getting a job itself. And this is also the reason why a lot of jobs nowadays are vacant. They can't find a worker simply because simply because yeah, their offer is not is just not that good. Their work is just too hard. People just don't like don't like it. Coupled with the coupled with the declining birth rate and also the changing of concept that people are having nowadays. So why does this transition of concept occur? A lot of times it, it is due to things like automation. It is due to things like the availability of higher education that give people like us, young people nowadays, a greater, yeah, a, a, a greater power to bargain for, for better salary and so and, and so on. So, so I think that uh, in a lot in, in a lot of cases, in this debate especially, what the metrics that we should uh, measure on is not is no longer employment, it's no longer the number itself. It's about something that are more qualitative, like what we are arguing throughout the, throughout the whole debate. So I think that the worst, the, the worst case in terms of when automation occur in our future world is just that people are not getting a job. But I think that a lot of these disadvantages or a lot of these drawbacks has been covered or has been like uh it has been significantly minimized by the benefits that's been brought forward by automation itself. It does just mean that current workers are getting uh, getting better pay, it not just means that workers are likely to have a better chance of career advancement and education, but it also means that it, it, in a country or in a society dominated by information and high value added industry, people are more likely to just, uh, yeah, they, they're, they're likely to have a better social security. So even if people are unemployed, in the end of the day, they are still likely to get, they are still likely to lead a better or or a comfortable or a reasonable life in contrast to what we have in the past. So I think that this debate can be judged in the uh, from, from a few from a few metrics, right? First of all, perhaps in terms of job employments, it, in terms of job employments, even we, we don't think that job employment opportunity really decrease, but even if it does decrease, we don't think that it's a bad thing. But, but in the end of the day, what can we actually gain in, from the opposition side, from the opposition side, and it's not responded from the government, it's, thing, it's, it's other things, for example, like the ability to bargain, the ability to demand for a better workplace or be better salary or career advancement, let's say, or education. I think that all of these things are also, uh, uh, are also important things that we should consider when we, are, when we are talking about the future of workers. Noting that futures of labor is not just about employment, it's also about, like, it's also about like, demand, it's also about like, working conditions. So with the improvement in work conditions, with the improvement of safety, with the improvement of social security, they are largely unresponded by opposition uh, from the government team. I think that it's quite clear that government team, uh, opposition team take this debate. Thank you. All right, am I audible? Yeah, there's so much audible. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I know, I love Jeff Bezos. He is my daddy, he is my everything. I am nothing more than a slave to him. If he tells me to go down on him and lick his boot, I will do so because he's a good man who cares about me. That is the current mentality of side opposition here because unfortunately, the main push coming from side opposition is something that's very unrealistic. Because first, they kept talking about how automation is good on four different metrics. Because they told us about how upskilling is possible, second, it leads to higher paying wages, Third, it removes 3D work. And fourth, how? Because it leads to higher productivity. It means that we're able to secure that increased taxes for social services. But then before moving on to the answer to answer some of the main questions, let's do a theory of what happened so far in this debate. First of all, right, 
we from the government has established multiple key points that's very important. First, we have established the automations are prioritized because they are the ones that can cut costs and to maximize profit for corporation. Second, we prioritize, we, we establish the automation helps to make your work easier, hence why it will lessen the amount of time for you to do your work. And because of this business would have required less workers, it means that it will cut down on uh, employer, uh, employ, employees. Third, is that we already established that corporations are little greedy entities that will cut down on workers, and that's why they will not be incentivized to hire any workers under both sides at all. Because, right, at the same time, the, the opposition kept talking about, oh, uh, they will hire workers, and even if they get more money, they'll be taxed. But the problem here is that even under status quo, when those companies are being taxed, they will literally just run away with tax. Because why? Because you can take a look at Apple, where they literally paid zero, literally zero money in taxes last year that were stated by the... um government week here. And so that really removes their whole point regarding social security and education in the first place. And last of all, we have also proven that upskilling doesn't work and it only benefits the minority because of two main reasons. First, because of capacity to upskill. If you want to upskill, you require education, you require the ability to go to university. And a lot of those people who are doing manual work, they are doing manual work sometimes because they really need to do so because they are old and because they don't have the ability to go to university. And second of all, it's regarding the quantity. Because at the end of the day, the opposition have admitted that there will be less jobs in general. Because back then there might be like five, five million, uh, five million, uh, um, what is it, manual labor jobs. But then in the new economy where there is automation, there might only be one million or even five hundred thousand jobs. So then let's do a couple of call-outs too. First of all, I'd like to remind all the panel is that the opposition failed to engage in any of our points. They refused to take off your eyes. And at the same time, even though their case remains somewhat charitable, it is highly unrealistic. And at the same time, like one thing I'd like to remind too is that the government have engaged them on their points, especially when they talk about, oh, how... Um, uh, about how this will develop our country and how my uh, government has stated that all of the benefits that come from automation only benefits developed countries in general. But moving on to the two main questions that will decide who wins debate. First is, is automation good? Panel, let's be clear. Maybe. Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. But one thing for certain is that automation are the thing that will make us lose millions of jobs. It means a lot of people will lose their work. It means a lot of people will lose their ability to get some sort of self-fulfilling work. And this is something that is very harmful on our side. Second of all, is that what does it actually lead to more employment? Which is no. Because panel, we can already see all around the world, and even at the, at the status quo, there are a lot of warehouses that are being automated where people are being removed from their jobs because those corporations want to get a lot of money. So then, what is the summary for the case for the government side? The summary here is that we believe corporations are greedy. Because of that, they will not hire any workers. And at the same time, automation and upskilling will never go together because there is no capacity for the majority of the population to upskill in the first place. Because side opposition have failed to mechanize on why exactly 90% of the people who are able, who will be removed due to automation can upskill in the first place, or you know, they can go through and they can go get education through university and so on and so forth. So hence why I'm proud to propose. Thank you. Thank you, Dino, for the time, Peter. Well done to everyone for today. Now, this day for closing ceremony of Piano is in your book, and I'll get a copy of it.